3.3. So we're going to learn to add, subtract, multiply, and divide these special types of functions. Okay, so uh, there's an interesting idea that comes up in this section. It's called domain. So we're going to have to start talking about domain. Whenever we start to add and subtract functions, sometimes we'll multiply them and divide them as well. So that's our goal today is to basically do a bunch of operations. So to take a look here, we're going to be adding them, we're going to be subtracting them, and we're going to be multiplying and dividing them. So uh, one of the things we have to consider, though, is the domain. So let me give you the basic idea of what domain is. So I want to switch screens here a little bit. When, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about values of x. What are the values of x? So a real basic example of this is when we're taking the square root of x. What are some of the numbers that we can use for x here? Kind of easy. Can you take the square root of 5? No, why not? Square root of 5, that's not a number? Could we do that? Huh? We can? And we can use a calculator, right? And get a decimal answer? Hold on, I have a bunch of Skype conversations going on. I know it's Valentine's Day and you guys would rather talk social stuff, but I'm doing a lesson right now, okay? So can we hold off on the conversation? Well, the point is, yeah, we can do the square root of 5. It's like if you plug it in your calculator, you get some answer, right? Uh, square root of 5 is at least 2, right? Square root of 5. Uh, might have to change the classic print to get a 2.2, right? Oh, 2.2. 2. 3, 6? Okay. What about the square root of 17? Can we do that one? Okay, yeah, but we could do it, right? We could just put it in a calculator. What about the square root of 1? Is 1. What about the square root of 0? 0. What about the square root of negative 4? No, right? So a natural question would be, how come? Because it's a negative, right? You can't take the square root of negative. So, you guys, seriously, I only sense about five people paying attention. So that brings up the idea of domain. When we state the domain of a function, we're stating the values that x could be. Like, for example, in this case, we would state that the domain, the domain, we write it out like this, I always put a colon, I'm going to say x could be greater than or equal to 0. As long as x is greater than or equal to 0, I can find the square root of x. Does that make sense? I could take the square root of 0 and any number bigger than 0. But as soon as I get smaller than 0, like negative 1 or negative 0.5 or negative whatever, we can't take the square root of that. Okay? Let's try another one. Suppose my function is 1 over x. Uh, what would my domain be for this one? Could I put negative 5 in for x? Yeah, what's, what's 1 over negative 5? We could do that, right? Isn't that equal to like negative 0.2? Uh, what are some other values can I put in for x? Can I put any number? I can? Except zero. So any number except zero, I can't allow this. This is our first commandment in mathematics, right? Thou shalt not divide by zero. So the way we would state that, we would state it as a domain, again, and 
And the way we'd say it looks like this. Domain. We're going to say all real numbers except x equal to 0. Does that make sense? So you could pick any number in this denominator except 0. Now, I want to show you some shortcuts we take. When we're talking domain, there's this phrase right here, all real numbers. We use a symbol for that because that's often the domain. So there's a shortcut we use for that. And it's, this is the symbol right here. It's a number with a double downstroke on the left side here. I'll show it again. R with a double downstroke. That means all real numbers. Okay? So we'll start abbreviating. Okay, so on, on a lot of these problems, we're going to be asked, to do the addition, do the subtraction, do the multiplication, do the division, but we're also going to be asked, what is the domain on x? Now, domain is always referring to x. Now, if we want to put restrictions on y, we call it the range. The range. Range refers to y's, domains refer to x. Okay? So let's go back and let's just try a couple examples. Okay, so find the following. Okay, so if we have these two functions, or two functions, f of x and g of x, and the first one we're asked to add. Well, that means we put this number in here, and put this number in here, whatever it is. And, and so in this case, we'd have 5x to the one-third plus uh, a negative... 11x to the one-third power. Well, we can add and subtract as long as we have like terms. Now, what do we need for like terms? We need to have the same variable, and we need to have the same exponent. They need to be the same. If they are the same, then you can add, just like apples and oranges. So 5 of these minus 11 of these In that case, we get negative 6x to the one-third power. Pretty easy so far, right? Just like adding and subtracting. Okay. Let's continue. What about this one? Well, this one's almost as easy. Uh, this one, we would get, well, we'd have 5x to the one-third power minus a minus 11x to the one-third. And, of course, a minus minus gives you a plus, so this is really 5x to the one-third plus 11x to the one-third. And just as I discussed before when we were doing this one, if the variables are the same and the exponents are the same, we can add, just like regular like terms. So five of these things plus 11 of these things is 16x to the one-third. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward as well. Nothing too challenging so far, right? Um, so let's try another one. Now we're asked to state the domain. Okay, so part C... Um, Make sure we get this. We're asked to state the domain. Well, so when we were doing this, 5x to the one-third power, um, what are some of the numbers that we can put in for x here? Can we have positive numbers? So the question is, could you have 8 to the one-third power? Well, yeah, we could. Um, you guys know how to simplify this, right? We could write this as 2 cubed to the one-third power. And then this would cancel. And then we get 2, right? 
could we put negative numbers in? What if we had negative 8? Could we put that to the one-third power? Well, that's the same thing as negative 2 cubed. And then if you rose that, raise that to the one-third power, this third would cancel, and so this would be equal to negative 2. So it looks like we could put positive numbers and negative numbers. What about 0? What's 0 to the one-third power? Huh? Yeah, that one's equal to 0. So think about this. We could do positive numbers. We could do negative numbers. We could do 0 numbers. <laughs> 0. So what's that mean about the domain of this? You guys are going to have to start doing this. What's the domain? For this right here. This expression. Do you think x is only equal to 3? Any number. Any number. Yeah, that's the idea. x could be any real number. So how do we state that? The domain, the domain of f, this one, when we added these two together, we have to look at the domain of this one, and we have to look at the domain of this one separately. But this one is all real numbers, right? All real numbers for that one. Do you think this one's any different? What kind of values can you put in for x here? The same values as you can put in there. That's all real numbers. Okay, it has a double down stroke. So what is the domain of f of f plus g? For this one, we're going to say all real numbers. Okay? That would be our domain uh, for f plus g. Is f minus g any different? No. All real numbers for this one also, right? So all real numbers for this one as well. Okay? Well, you can write out the phrase all real numbers. Now, that's what I like to do is use numbers like that. But this symbol right here means all real numbers. So that's a shortcut. Why not? You can add zero, right? What, what's five plus zero? Five. So can we add zero? Yeah, so this domain allows zero. If, if there's a problem with some numbers, well, this is what we need to do. So let's go back to this. If we had 1 over x, we want to say all real numbers except 0, right? So we would say domain for this one. We would say all real numbers except x equal to 0. You're telling the only value that's not allowed. Okay. Um, so, anyhow, we got to get in the habit of doing domain. The rest of this semester, we'll be doing domain quite a bit. And so you got to get used to what it means. All you're stating are the values that x can take on. If there are certain values it can't take on, you need to let us know. And that's kind of what you do with the client. When you solve a problem for them, you got to tell them what kind of values, what kind of numbers you can put in the formula. Because not all values will work, especially if we we're dealing with length or things that have to be positive. Okay. Well, let's move on. Now we have two new functions. Okay, so we're going to find these two, and then we're going to state the domain. Okay, so I'm going to stop and allow you to do this on your study guide. On the very back page of your study guide, can you do these parts, A, B, and C? And we'll see if we get this right, okay? And I'm going to stop uh, stop the show for a moment. Okay, so let's check your answers of mine. I think there's some tricky things on this example versus the last one we did. So... Um, when we try multiplying, it looks like what we'd have is 8x times 2x to the 5 6 power. Well, the easy part about this one so far is 8 times 2 is 16. So 
So that part is easy. Uh, but then we have x times x to the 5 6 power. Well, we need to add those exponents. So let's put a 1 on here for right now. And by the way, couldn't we write x as, if it's a 1, can't we write it as 6 over 6? I mean, why did I choose that? Anyone have an idea? I mean, 1 is equal to 2 over 2. It's equal to 3 over 3. It's 4 over 4, right? It's equal to all these things, right? I chose 6 over 6. Anyone have an idea why? Because of the other fraction over here has a denominator of 6 also, right? And you cannot add fractions until the denominators are the same, right? So I chose 6. And that allows me to add these two. So I get 11 over 6. So I get x to the 11th power over 6. There's my exponent. Now, before I get to the domain, I mean, before I get to part C, I mean, I want to answer the domain for each of these separately, okay? So while I have this on the screen, because as soon as I hit my mouse, it's going to clear it, I want to talk about the domain of this one, okay? What did you guys come up with the domain? Anyone have an idea? Okay, so some people said domain, and they said x is equal to all real numbers. Is that right? Okay, so this one's a little bit subtle. In fact, the domain is not all real numbers. But why? What the Choros, right? We can say that. I'm okay with that. It's not all real numbers. Do you remember when we said, what is the domain for the square root of x? What's the domain for the square root of x? Now hold up. What's the square root of negative 4? You can't, you can't do that, can you? Okay, so what would the square root, or what's the fourth root of x? What would the domain of that one be? Can you have negatives for this one also? Well, you guys try it on the calculator, okay? I'll let you guys try this out. What's the square root or the fourth root of negative 16, for example? What is that equal? It's a domain error. It's a domain error. You can't... Okay, so what this is saying, if this is equal to x, then what it's saying is that x to the fourth is equal to negative 16. What number can you multiply four times... Like a number here, a number here, a number here, and a number here, and make it turn out to be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. So if you have four negatives in here, it equals positive. So you can't make it negative, can you? So what's the domain then? If you have the fourth root of x, the domain for this is x is greater than or equal to 0. What's the domain on the sixth root of x? All real numbers again? No. No. X is greater than or equal to 0, right? All right. What's this equivalent to? This is x to the 1 sixth power, right? Okay, see, so take a look. Let's review this. This is kind of subtle here. I need everyone paying attention. I want to think about four of you are. So everyone, eyes and ears up here, please. The square root of x, the square root, has an index of 2. We don't write the index in there because it's the default. Uh, everyone understands the square root of x is the index is 2, and no one tells you that. But we can write that with a fractional exponent to the 1 half power. Uh, the fourth root of x is equal to x to the one-fourth, right? Uh, the sixth root of x, okay, is equal to x to the one-sixth power. Now, what did we have on our previous problem? 
We had x to the 11 6 power. What's that mean about the index? It's equivalent to that scenario. And what's the domain on this? X is greater than or equal to zero. You can't take the square root or a fourth root or a sixth root of a negative number. So if we were to go back to our PowerPoint, back to the domain, what did we have when we multiplied? Um, pardon me, hang on. We had, we, we multiplied the 8 and the 2, we got 16. We multiplied this x times this one, and we had x to the 11 over 6. Well, my friends, this is equivalent to 16 times x to the 6th root to the 11th power. So the question is, can you allow that to be negative? No, you cannot allow that to be negative because it's a sixth root. So there is a domain on this one, and it's not all real numbers. You have to consider the domain of this guy, and the domain of that guy says you can't have negative numbers because it has an index of six. It's like a sixth root. Now, now this is where it gets tricky. Now, I want you to catch this. What if this were a, well, Let's say it was a 4 instead. Now, I think, okay, I'm getting to something really, I want you to understand the difference between this, x to the 11, 6, versus this one, x to the 4 over 6. Okay? This one, this one we're going to say the domain, we're going to say, is x is greater than or equal to 0. This one we can actually say the domain is x is equal to all real numbers. So what is the difference? Greater than 7? Say it again. This is greater than zero. This is, <laughs> now that's a greater than or zero. Okay, so my question is, what is the difference between these two? Can someone please tell me? Because this goes a long ways into understanding what the domain is talking about. Okay, maybe I should switch. Let's switch this over to its radical form. This would be x to the 11th power and the 6th root of it. This would be equal to the 6th root again, but it's x to the 4th power. Now the question is, could you have a negative number here? Well, let's think about this. What's 2, negative 2, what's negative 2 to the 11th power? Try it in your calculator, real quick. No, it's not. It's a big honking number. What's negative 2? Negative 2 to the 8th. No, it's... What did you get? Negative 2,048. Now, my next question is, you see, when you go to the 11th power, you get a negative answer, right? What if you go to the fourth power? It's positive. It's automatically positive. Is this thing ever negative? No. No. And since this is never negative, you can have all real numbers for this one. You see? So you have to think about what's in here as well. This one could be negative because it's an odd power. So we cannot allow it to be negative. And so that's why we say the domain is bigger than or equal to zero. This one, who cares if you put a negative number into x? It's to the fourth power. It's going to change it back to a positive number. You see? So domain can be very, very tricky. In some cases, you'd say all real numbers. In some cases, you're going to say x is greater than or equal to 0. So cuidado. You need to be careful, right? The domain is not so easy. Okay, so now let's go on to part B.
What did you guys get on this one? All real numbers except zero. That's your domain? Yeah. Okay, well, let's simplify and see what we get and so we can make sure. Okay, so f of x over g of x, well, that would be 8x over 2x to the 5 6th power. What did you guys simplify this to? Four. I got 4. I agree. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then we made that one 6 over 6. And so there's a rule that says if you're dividing that you subtract the exponent. So this is going to be x to the 6 over 6 minus 5 over 6. That equals x to the 1 6 power. So this is x to the 1 6. And you guys are telling me that the domain is all real numbers for this? Except zero. Except zero? Zero works. You can take the six power. Now hold up now. This one's tricky again. There's two things tricky about it. Yeah, I did. Now, you have to consider the domain of the two functions separately. Look here. Can we allow zero to be down here? Can zero be down here? Okay, so we cannot allow x to be equal to 0. x cannot be 0 because you would have a division by 0 error. You can't even do this division if x is equal to 0, right? Now, it's true that this simplifies to this, but you have to consider this because you can't get to this if that's 0. And in other words, you can't go from here to here if x is 0. You can't even allow zero to be here. So this has to be part of our domain. We cannot allow zero to be in there. The question is, now that you've simplified it to this, are there other values besides zero that we cannot allow? Why? Why? Why is that a value? A number. Pick a number. Is there another number that x can't be? Or is there a sequence of numbers that we can't have? Can't be negative. This is a sixth power again. This is a sixth root. Okay, so what would that look like? This would look like four sixth root of x to the one power. Can you allow that to be negative? Yes. You can? No. Can can we allow this to be negative? Okay, here here's how this works. X to the sixth power is equal to negative 1. Is that possible? Uh, no. You, no, that's what we did here. See, what's the inverse operation? If I do the 6th root here, and I do the 6th root here, I would have x is equal to the 6th root of negative 1. We just said we can't make that happen. So the domain here has to be x is greater than or equal to 0. And we already knew that you can't have a zero for there. Can't have a zero. So now you can't even take the you can't allow this to be zero because of that. But now it has to be also bigger than zero because it can't be a negative number. So do you see the domain on this one's really tricky? Really tricky. So it's true that this is our answer. We've simplified it. But now the domain, what we want to state is the domain correctly. You have to consider the two functions individually by themselves. And this function going in cannot have a zero down there. So the overall domain is what? X is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's how we'd state it. My friend... The trickier part on this assignment is going to be figuring out the domain correctly. Many, many times the domain will be all real numbers. But there are lots of times when it's not. And you're expected to catch that. This is becoming a more and more important idea as we go through Algebra 2.
especially when we get to logarithms and things like that. You feeling more comfortable about this, I hope? So you'll notice that there's two parts to this lesson. This is where we're going to stop with part one. And I want you to work on your study guide now and do as much as you can on your study guide. 